And so I want to pray for you now. Lay hands on your ears. And we know you can see. We know you can sense all of those things. But, but we're just going to lay hands on our ears right now. Father, right now I pray for each of these. Oh, Father, there's been those that's already been interceding for these before they ever got here. Father, for their miracle that they have need of, the word they have need of, for your presence to come in and break whatever yokes are needed, for any deliverance that's needed, areas of healing, miracles released. And Father, you said we have not because we ask not. Well, God, we don't fall in that category. We have asked. And so we say, release your mighty hand over each of these, over all of those online right now. Release your mighty hand. God, we even deliberately kind of get out of your way, Holy Spirit. And we say, come move with great power, great authority. And Father, we give you grace. Father, we say you're not interrupting what we're doing. We say, come Holy Spirit, come. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done tonight on earth here in Windsor as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. If you can stand to your feet tonight, we've got Pastor Prophet Rob on the keyboard. And do we have, is she leading? Naomi and him are leading together tonight. I've not, I've kind of seen you do that before, a little here and a little there, but I'm looking forward to it. So uh, that is wonderful. So we just think for the liberty of God upon them and the power of God upon them. Amen. And just in case you don't know, we do not believe in a slow start. We believe if you want to be in the presence of God, go get in the presence of God. If you want to sit in heavenly places, go sit in those heavenly places. Amen. If you want to take the hand of God, go take the hand of God. If you want to grab the hem of his garment, go grab the hem of his garment. Don't wait for someone to get you in the mood. God bless you. Father, I pray over each of these. Let them hear. Let them move. Let them go where you're leading them. Let them know the fullness of what you have brought them here for. Father, you said that if everybody prophesies and one comes in uh, that doesn't know you, that they're going to have the word of the Lord spoken over them, that they're, they're going to be convicted of sin, the secrets of their heart are going to be made manifest, and they are going to leave being a marketing agent for you, saying, surely Jesus is in that place. And Father, we ask for that's what this place will be known for. Surely Jesus is in that place. In the name of Jesus, amen. Find the Holy Spirit in your heart, your spirit, your life. Do whatever it is you need to do. You seers, close your eyes, find the face of God. We don't want the skin just to be something that gets us in the mood. We want you in the presence right before the King of Kings. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hold on there for just a moment. We need the peace of Jesus spoke over our world tonight. Um, 
Moses said, is there here a prophet? Now let him intercede. One of our highest calls is to intercede. It is not just that you would know the secrets, but when you did know the secrets, are you gonna be those that intercede and negotiate so that there are less death, deaths in war? Are you gonna be one that intercedes and negotiates with God like Abraham and Moses did to postpone crisis and chaos or be able to even halt it? Are you gonna be able to be one that it's lessened severely because you prayed? See, we're not an immature prophetic group that's just excited because we get a revelation. We want the purposes of God released in the earth. Can we go right back in that song? I just left Poland yesterday morning and you know, Poland had over 17 million Ukrainians go through their borders on to elsewhere refugees in the last two years. At one time they had 3 million living there now they currently have one million living there. It's changed their whole landscape forever. You know, it'll, uh, it'll never look the same. You know, there's a merging of cultures. There's a merging of languages. There's uh, a merging even of, of uh, religions. There's people that can't work with their qualifications. I mean, it's, it's incredible. We look at Russia. We recognize the Antichrist spirit. We recognize who it's using, but we're asking for preservation of the people. We want a revival generation in Russia. We want to be able to speak peace. We want to be able to speak healing over Russia. Doesn't mean we want to compromise. We don't want peace with compromise. We want peace with victory. There is a difference. Look what's going on in Israel. Hamas just hijacked the whole aid package. People didn't get it. But it was a true exposure, wasn't it? That just happened. And we're just saying, God, would you do a miracle there? We want Palestinians to come know you, Jesus. We want Israel to know a peace that's never known, and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. When you don't know how else to pray, that's how you pray for Israel. There are more coups going on in Africa right now than any other time in history. Can we move back into this song and you use every bit of your corporate authority? as we speak these things over the nations right now from here in Windsor.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus in your name your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows but this isn't my strength but if pastor rob can make this work with the melody can we just say we speak jesus over israel right now speak jesus over israel jesus over israel jesus over israel jesus over Shine. 
how can you help but not shout right now? Prophet Rob, why don't you just lead us into prayer with what's going on in our nation here in the UK right now. Yeah, Father, we just lift up this nation which is in political chaos right now, God. But Lord, we prophesy the order and government of heaven over this nation right now in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare that every scheme of the enemy is brought to naught now in the name of Jesus. Father God, every globalist agenda to bring about this nation into compliance with a one world government, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus. We say there is one king over this nation and his name is Yeshua HaMashiach. We decree that you, Jesus, are the king of this nation. And right now we call this nation and all the nations of the West back to our Christian heritage. Right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we break every demonic ideology that is trying to raise itself up against the knowledge of the glory of God in this day, in Jesus' name. And Father God, we say, God, set in place godly, righteous politicians who cannot be bought, who cannot be influenced by ungodly lobby groups and lobbyists, Father God. We decree and declare the stronghold of the enemy over our political system broken in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare that the answer for this nation is not a man, is not a government, is not a political party, but it is the ecclesia of God rising in all our authority. And so we decree and declare over the ecclesia in this nation, arise, 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 arise. Oh, we break off apathy. We break off insecurity and fear in the name of Jesus. We break the grip of the fear of persecution and we say, so what if it comes? Lord Jesus, we say that your church is unmovable. Your kingdom is ever expanding. Of the increase of your government and peace, there shall be no end. And Lord, we lift up the United States to you right now. And where there is civil strife, and where there is brother fighting brother, like civil war times, and where there are those, Father, that are uh, uh, bringing chaos in a time where they need to have godly wisdom to elect new government. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak to the mountain of distraction. And we command that you be thrown into the sea right now in the name of Jesus. And we speak to even the organizers of paying protesters that would travel around. And we just say, expose and halt it now in the name of Jesus. Father, we call forth revival upon our university campuses in the United States. And that it will not be a place, Father, of, of murder and bloodshed and civil division, but it will be a place of awakening. It will be a place, Father, of lives changing. It will be a place of your power being demonstrated. Father, we acknowledge that the government of the United States has no grid to know how to deal with this other than just to let it go, hoping it will quit and then break it up and arrest them if they won't. But there's no solution without you. So right now we call upon heaven and we call for the solution in the midst of this. Father, that this is not going to be election that's stolen. This is not going to be, Father, a generation, Father, that is uh, deluded. And this is not gonna be a, a delay of revival. We say, no, in the name of Jesus, and we speak Jesus over the United States of America. 
Do we have any uh, Haitians here this evening? We don't have any Haitians here this evening. I pastored Haitians for years, you know, because I had all those churches in Miami. So we had Cuban churches, Haitian churches, uh, Central uh, American churches. Father, we just pray for what's going on in um, Haiti right now. God, we know the long-standing issues. And we know if we all got what we deserved, that none of us would make it. And so far, we're not asking that Haiti gets what it's deserved or what's been sowed over the years. But God, we're asking, Jesus, Lord of mercy, and God of deliverance. Would you arise and change a nation in a day? Would you arise and change a nation in a day? Just stand there a moment. I don't know if you realize this, but the good pleasure of God is flowing down on you. As you stood here and brought the nations before him. Can you just feel that and receive that? The good pleasure of God. saturate you. Many of you, you never had anybody in your life that just poured good pleasure out upon you. An orphan generation of fatherless people don't have that. God is pouring out his good pleasure. Some of us are like some dry sponges and we're just. <laughs> I'm finding it hard to leave this environment. Can you just turn to two other people and say, God's good pleasure is all over you. to take this moment to receive our offering. And remember with prophetic people, it doesn't mean you don't need the word of truth, but we also believe that it says that you do what you have prepared in your heart, but also that any direction you need, you have the ability to ask of God. So Jane, if you could, oh, she's already got the information put on the screen. You're giving to prophetic voice tonight. You're sitting on envelopes. There is a, um, a credit card machine out in the foyer there. If you want to pay by credit card and not give your number, you're welcome to do that. The rest of you could pay by QR code. 
Also, if you'll remember that next Saturday is going to be our uh, uh, May Mentoring Day. And we are so excited to have you join myself, Prophet Rob, and Steve Tibbs. So it's going to be a powerful time in the spiritual realm. Now remember, we get together, it's not just about you learning to prophesy a little bit better. You're moving into the culture of hearing the voice of God. You're moving into the partnership of God to partner with His purposes. See, there's a time where we go, God, I want to know my purpose. I want to know my identity. I want to know my destiny. And then there's a time that the script is flipped. Oh, God, we want to know your identity. We want to know your purpose. We want to know your destiny. And we learn how to prophetically partner with that in a greater way. And I, I am so excited that you are that kind of people. I see people writing down, so please do. That does work if you aim your phone in that direction, I was told. People are walking outside to the, to the bank card machine, so uh, we'll give them a moment. And I stand. of all love songs I want to bring to you so I'll let my words be you Jesus I am so
Heavenly Father, we just come together, Lord, as one, as one corporate, one corporate gathering, one family, Lord, and we just bless this offering, Father. In the name of Jesus, we speak, Father, as we have sown, Father, not into a basket, Lord. We have not sown into a pocket. We have sown, Father, into a treasuring box, Father, into a treasury, Father, that is unending and unlimited, Father. And so we thank you, Father, and we extend our faith, Father, into that seed. And we speak unmeasurable amounts of blessings over this, Father. And we speak in the name of Jesus, Father, for a return, not for us. Ourselves, Father, for your kingdom, Lord. We speak, Father, and we give you thanks, Lord, Father, for what you have lended to us, Father. We give back to you, Father, and we thank you, Lord, because you are good to us, Lord. We just bless this offering, Father, and we bless, Father, the, the mediator, the priest of this offering, Father, also Dr. Sharon Stone, Lord. We bless her life, Lord, and we bless everyone under prophetic voice, Father. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Can we just uh, stand up and just thank God for this offering and just give us God give God a round of applause. Amen. 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 Um, Prophet Rob, you want to introduce the band tonight and as we release them? <laughs> so we have Naomi here, we have B, we have Gary, and we have David. So these guys are awesome. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Uh, you guys are released. And, and uh, Prophet Rob, you can either take another seat and join me up here now, or you can do it later. Uh, either way. I am just as comfortable with that as can be. If people don't know by now, um, this is my 50th year in uh, ministry. <laughs> and I can honestly say... I don't do it by feelings of being driven, coerced, a need to perform or perfect. I have a true grace for partnership with Jesus. And there are some real benefits of getting older and of doing it a long time. There are some things we either get delivered from or you just grow out of. You know, and, and I, I truly enjoy it. Um, it it's a cr quite a privilege. You were telling me as we were, um, uh, first of all, if this is your first time here, could you just uh, lift your hand so that we can acknowledge you? Welcome, 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 welcome. Wow. Welcome. We are so glad to have you here. We are so glad to have you here. We have a special guest with us too, Megan from Australia. If you could just stand. She's... she's known among the prophets in Australia. She's been here doing a uh, prayer assignment, 
and she started, I think, in the Hebrides, so we know that had to do with revival, and she's been here uh, in uh, London as well, in key spots, and so we are just so grateful for her bringing her prayer and her authority and uh, being commissioned by God. We agree with her for the fruitfulness upon all that was sowed, and we've already asked her if she would send us back a bullet point so we know how to uh, pray and continue to uh, uh, keep the th revelation that God brought alive so we see the fullness of the manifestation of that. And thank you, Megan. We love having you with us. It is so great. Now, I did just get back from Poland, and I was with Chuck Pierce, which was great, and we had a great time together, and um, we've actually ministered together since we were both in our 30s. So, you know, it was just a couple years ago, but we've really... <laughs> We really enjoyed our, our time, but we had another uh, speaker there that I hadn't uh, seen in several years, and neither had Chuck, and so I don't know if you know this name, because most of you are just too young to know this name, but his name is Mel Tari. Yes, come on. Mel Tari is known for the book, uh, 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 the, 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 Like a Mighty Wind, and he was from a small little island in Indonesia, where he became um, worldwide known for raising the dead and verified and, and uh, multiplied and, uh, yeah, even decomposing bodies. And so, um, so we had him with us, and so I want you to know I have brought back a resurrection anointing. I wasn't leaving without it, you know? I really have had the privilege of raising two people from the dead. But all that means is, uh, is you know, it's a good beginning. <laughs> Isn't that right? It's a, just a good beginning to what the Spirit of God wants to do. And you shared that the Lord had given you kind of a scripture for tonight. Yeah, I've been meditating on Psalm 103. Um, and the Lord's even had me memorizing it. Don't ask me to recite the whole thing. But for, it's so interesting, Dr. Sharon was getting us to wait at the end of worship because for the last two or three weeks, I've been seeing the river of God. And, you know, that song, there is a, it's from a psalm, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God. And that other in Ezekiel, it says, everywhere the river goes, it brings life. And I've just been seeing the water level rise. But I've been feeling for many of us that we need to activate that place of receiving and in the past, soaking has been this kind of really, it was amazing at the beginning, but then it became this passive thing where people just, you know, turned up and took a nap, you know. We called it sloking, you know, sleep soaking, sloking. So instead of soaking in the glory and pickling in the glory, people would just go to sleep, you know. And there's a time and a place for that. I do that sometimes, you know, go to sleep in the glory. Um, but there is a way that we receive from the Lord that's highly active. And so the Lord had me, he was like, the river of God is flowing and he wants us to release it everywhere we go, but we have to receive it first. And so the Lord had me in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who uh, redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy and who fills, satisfies you with good so that your life is restored like the eagle. And I don't know about you, but, well, that's only a little bit. <laughs> Jesus, help. I feel like I need to go back to that, you know, memorizing scripture. But our world needs the forgiveness of sin, of iniquity. It needs the healing of our bodies. It needs redeeming from the pit. It needs crowning with steadfast love and mercy. It needs good things, blessings, so that um, our youth, our strength may be restored. But all of this flows from the presence, from the river of God. And so I really felt that as we're coming here, so I was even reciting it in the car on the way. I've been having it playing on the audio Bible as well, reading it in different translations that there is something about us blessing the Lord, which literally means praising God, uh, that is going to release, I believe, from this place and everywhere we go, the river of God to bring healing and life. Everywhere the river goes, it brings life. And so tonight, if you need that, this is your opportunity 
But I believe it's not simply about sitting back and waiting for a prophetic word or for someone to lay hands on you, but you commanding your soul to bless the Lord and remember that without him, you'd be on your way to hell. Remember that without him, you'd have no hope of healing. At some point, the NHS doesn't work, you know, but Jesus works. That without him, that you'd be stuck in the pit. Without him, you would have no hope of being crowned. And yet Jesus says, I take you from the pit and I crown you. And then I give you even more blessing. That's so that everywhere we go, we get to release it. Amen. Hallelujah. We receive that. Amen. And, and this is a, a prophetic time. But I felt like the key that the Spirit of the Lord gave me, of course, was right along with that. Psalms 147.3. He heals the broken heart and and he binds up their wounds. You know, our testimony from our prophetic encounter nights, our people, um, oh, we even had one um, the month before last where he got a heart transplant uh, that, that God gave him, verified uh, by the surgeons, that there was just no hope for him. He damaged it too much with drugs over the years. And then uh, we've had uh, tumors, brain tumors, all sorts, cancers. We've had even people go to the bathroom and cancers have fallen out. And we have had so many different things because what happens is it's not the fact that you're seeking a healing, you're coming in contact with the healer. Amen. And it, you can't separate Jesus from his voice. And so when you have a prophetic word go forth, and so what it says, he heals the broken heart and, and he binds up their wounds. What a beautiful verse. Actually, we'll do what uh, Rob just did. We'll, we'll do a verse memorization right now. He heals the brokenhearted, broken and he binds up their wounds. Up their wounds. Psalms 147.3. Let's do it again. He heals the brokenhearted, broken and he binds up their wounds. Up their wounds. Psalms 147.3. Such so a simple and beautiful verse. But I believe one of the things that we need to look for when we're looking at this is that so often people's destiny, people's giftedness, people's identity, their purpose, people's longevity, people's um, uh, supply, finances, business, influence, and health is very dependent upon their heart being healed and being whole. And I actually saw um, uh, a movie last week. I don't know. I think it's come on. Is it on Netflix or Sky? But it's The Tattooist of Auschwitz. Has anybody started seeing that yet? It's, it's Sky. And I caught just enough. But I stopped uh, at, uh, uh, at a point where uh, the lady that's trying to write the, the memoirs from this guy and she had to stop because she was going into trauma from having written all of these things about what he went through. And there's actually a medical term for that is, you know, that you can go through shared trauma and all that. But there's also another medical term for being uh, uh, broken hearted, that it actually has physical ailments that that go with that. And we're not giving that to anybody tonight, and we're not one of those that wants you to go on the on the uh, internet and search something out, and then you've diagnosed yourself. That's not what we're wanting. But we also realize this: that uh, Greg and I read a book years ago, and it says, "You're not sick; you're thirsty." And uh, it was a book about how our bodies need so much water, and most people never drink that level of water, and so you have your body doesn't function on its highest capacity. And then we read another book that says um, uh, uh, your heart is broken you're, uh, and, and uh, you have become, uh, you, oh, oh, it's cultivated your body for disease. And I know I, miss, I said that title horribly, but that's what it meant. And I believe that so much, that's why when you prophesy over somebody and you go for the root of something, that often you'll find out that God will go for the root of something and you won't even have to deal with the fruit. The fruit is just automatically uh, dealt with. Uh, years ago, when people used to actually read out of a paper newspaper, uh, there was a newspaper in Nashville, Tennessee, and um, they were doing a study on brokenhearted, and they contacted pastors in their area, 
and they said, could you send us a list of names of people that you know are, that are brokenhearted so that we could interview them? And one pastor, and of course, you can't do this today because this isn't the way it operates today, but the United States phone books are about this large. And, you know, they are huge, and they're very heavy. And he sent them the telephone book. <laughs> because at some time or another, everyone is going to face trauma. Everyone is going to face disappointment. Everybody is going to face loss. Everybody is going to have grief. Everybody is going to be brokenhearted. It's not the fact that those things happen to you. It's do they remain with you? And about two years ago, I was on a prophetic phone call, and we had, what would you guess, maybe 20 prophets from around the world, and we're all on this phone call together, and we were speaking into different issues that were going on in the world, and I don't know who brought it up. Oh, I think I, I, think I did. Um, well, they asked me if I had any area of, of personal prayer. I wanted I said, yes. I said, God's been speaking to me about uh, some things in my life. And I said, I'm believing him by faith, but I really don't have the understanding to go with it. And the reason was, was God was telling me that I have so much undealt with trauma in my life that I'm attracting more trauma in my life. And I thought, you know, this is one of those blind spots. I just did not have revelation of it, but I know the voice of God. And so I happened to mention it. And then a friend of ours, a prophet, uh, Patricia Bootsma, she goes, oh, God just told me that about myself last year. Here's a book I'm going to tell you to get. Uh, I know a counselor you could go to on Zoom. And, and then everybody else goes, oh, I need that too, and I need that too. And here are these amazing, functioning, healthy men and women that are changing the world. And the reason I say that is this. There comes to a place if we don't deal with trauma and we don't deal with getting healed of our broken heart, heart then we have hit a capacity level that it makes it difficult to move on. And so I had to take a concerted effort. I've read manuals. I've read books. I've prayed prayers. I've sought the heart of God. You know, I was, because I was born with the bone disease and had, you know, the over 150 breaks, uh, you know, uh, in my life before I was um, uh, 25, uh, because I had all those, and my parents, bless their hearts, young parents, they had no grid for being able to deal with that kind of trauma themselves. So they'd just say, honey, don't cry, don't make any noise, don't do it. You know, just because they did, not because they were trying to be mean. But if from a very young age, I learned you don't respond to pain. You know, you suck it up and you take care of others around about you. That's not such an oddity. You know, I think a lot of people would that. But I also had the uh, dynamics of my family that I was sexually abused from the time I was born. And so when, then when you're handicapped, you can't even get away to, to give that. And so um, I dealt with that in my uh, older life, and I did all the confrontations, and I did all the forgiveness, and I did all of the healing stuff and all of that. And I can truly say when I go places and I give testimonies uh, of those areas, uh, it sounds to me almost like I'm talking about someone else. Because I know those are my history, but they don't define me. And there's not a button on the inside of me that when pushed, it activates anything. So the Spirit of God has been so wonderful. And many of you know that uh, I'm an advisor, and, um, and uh, a couple times a year, I work with Mercy UK. And Mercy UK is an incredible uh, organization. It has been a residential house up till now. Uh, after COVID, it's been going through a season of change. But they bring uh, young uh, women and girls in from um, for a six-month season. And they can be everything from being suicidal to having eating disorders to having um, some of them been trafficked. So, so most of them have had different forms of sexual abuse. Uh, many of them um, uh, uh, wrong gender orientation. Uh, all sorts of things. It's it's, but definitely demonized. I mean, there is. So I never knew the when I go in the first time when they just bring in a new group of girls. I never knew if I was going to get punched, spit upon, or what. You didn't know, and it was it was quite an environment. And they love it when I bring Greg, and you know why? It, and he's really the only man that's there. You know why they love it? They've not been around a clean man before, <laughs> and they are just in awe that there's a man there and he's clean. And they're in awe that I went through what I went through and I have a healthy marriage and 
healthy kids and, and, and those things because that brings a lot of uh, hope to them. So why did I say all of these, these areas? The reason that, that I pour back, particularly in these areas, is because of what I see six months later. After they have been there for six months, they have, correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, a 94% success rate for people staying delivered over the areas that they came in for five and 10 years even later. We don't have that statistics in any of our churches. And uh, so uh, I feel like I'm getting to grow in, uh, in uh, a deliverance even, even more as, as we move forward in those areas. But what I found out is the Spirit of God is excited about touching these areas in people's lives because he wants you whole. See, if I have a vulnerable place, say, because I had all the broken bones. So say I had a broken wrist. You know, you could touch my leg and I would be fine. But you touch my wrist and it's it's vulnerable. It's painful. Ow, 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 don't touch that. You know, it, 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 it gives me pain. Many of us are living our lives like that, and yet we're serving God with absolutely everything that we've got. And I don't encourage other people to do this, but many of you know one of the ways that I got healed from broken bones the fastest before I got delivered from the bone disease, would I, would, I would actually dance on broken bones. And, you know, they even have um, x-rays at uh, Oral Roberts um, Hospital in um, uh, Oklahoma that show me coming in with fractures on my firmer, the biggest bone in your body, uh, and two hours later having no fractures at all and not even the calcium deposits of where it was, was healed. But there was no quicker way. I wouldn't encourage others to do that. That was my personal revelation. Uh, but I found out something that, that happened to me. I believe in this. When you, God can touch your heart and you can love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, you're shifted into a realm where there is no sickness, there is no disease, there is no addiction. You're in a place where there is a moment, take your freedom, grab hold of your freedom. Embrace it. Homestead your freedom. Because if he brings his will from heaven to earth, there is none of those things in heaven. And he wants to bring those forth in your life. Now, do people still die? Do people still get sick? Yes, that's part of the, the fall. And it still happens. But God wants you to know a greater healing and a greater wholeness. And that he's the healer of any traumas so that all those vulnerable parts that you've experienced over the years cannot keep coming back. You know, uh, trauma in the area of broken relationships, abandonment, um, uh, a broken covenant, and now new relationships seem to go around the same mountain again. How is that possible? Familiar things still attracting. The wound still attracts. And so... God wants to be the healer of the broken heart uh, um, uh, in our lives. And this affects every single one of us. And I'm one of those people that I'm never embarrassed or ashamed to get people free of anything. Also, um, and Rob is just almost that way now. <laughs> you know, he's very, but uh, a little more English than I am. But, uh, but. He is very bold at getting people free. But we want you whole in such a way that you don't have to keep getting healed. You can use all your strength to progress with whatever it is that the Spirit of God has given you to do, to be, uh, to accomplish. And you don't have to do you know, two steps forward and one step back. You don't have to do advance and victory and then recovery. And some people just go, if you mention a warfare, uh, even like tonight, even though it was beautiful in the area of song where we released the name of Jesus over the nations, we, that was warfare. And some people don't want to go into that, go, warfare, oh, no, you know, I'm so weary of fighting. I'm so weary of fighting. The reason you're weary of fighting is you have uh, history 
of going into spiritual warfare and not seeing the victory. And so it feels like it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it has worn you down. And so to go back in, you dread it because you go, oh, not again. Here we go again. Rather than if you were one that was on assignment by God and you were going from victory to victory, the taste of victory would be in your mouth that you would be gathering the spoils of war and you would go, yes, we're ready for the next fight. You know, let's take the land and give Jesus the nations as his inheritance. And so we get to a place where God says, okay, I'm going to take care of the boat that leaks. And that's us. I'm going to take care of the boat that leaks so that you don't have to go back and keep redoing the same things again and again. Is there anybody in this room that says, I'd like some of that? All of us, hopefully. Father, we just pray over that area right now in the name of Jesus. I pray over each one of these. All of us need healing. All of us need restoration. All of us need uh, uh, um, uh, you to come in and do a miracle where we cannot do a miracle. All of us need you to identify what we have blind spots for. Every one of us in this room, Father, that we have been hurt, we have been harmed. Every one of us in this room, uh, we are there are mighty uh, survivors. But God, we're asking, would you turn us not just to be those that have the ability to survive, but Father, those that have the ability to rescue the perishing. Father, that we have such victory victory on the inside of us, such wholeness on the inside of us, that we are bringing others victory and wholeness all around about us, that we are truly walking fearlessly in this life because of what you have already done within us. God, we ask you to release that tonight on each one of us right now. And so I'm, I don't want to take a long time, but I want to share with you a few scriptures because that's not what tonight is about as a teaching. It's about uh, releasing uh, prophetic words. And in Psalms 51, 16 and 17, it says, uh, it is, uh, David is speaking uh, of the Lord. And he says, you would not delight in sacrifice or would I bring it? Uh, you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh, God, you will not despise. How about that? God says, listen. I want you to come to me with your broken heart. Actually, it's a real invitation to me because I'm attracted <laughs> to a place that there's a brokenness on the inside of you. And he says, so, uh, so I want to do this uh, for you. And it says he will not despise uh, those areas. Now, there's something I want to share with you. And real quick, a lot of us don't know how to deal with grief. and We don't know how to deal with loss. And we don't know how to deal with with hurt. We don't know how to deal with brokenness. I remember when my daughter died a few years back. You know, she was fine one day, had a freak stroke, and um, all of a sudden they call me here. She's in her 30s, her prime, no drugs involved, and she's dead. And, you know, you don't have a grid for that. You don't have a way you can figure that out. But I'll tell you, I knew Jesus and I cocooned myself, and he cocooned me very well. And um, I only counseled about two weeks' worth of meetings, and I still went to him. But I'll be honest with you, I don't remember that year after my daughter died. Isn't that strange? I stayed so cocooned by the Spirit of God that I was buffered. And it, it offered a healing environment that was taking place in my soul and in my broken heart that I had no – I had – no way or no maturity or no uh, place to get there on my own. And um, I even remember being in my daughter's funeral service. And I've got my oldest son sitting here on one side of me. I got Bishop Bill Hammond, you know, my father and the Lord, his oldest son, sitting on the other side of me. And, you know, they got a whole wonderful service for her and everything. And they even have a dance team up there because my daughter was part of the dance team, you know, and dancing and everything. And all of a sudden, you know, were there. And, of course, the tears are rolling down my cheeks. You're not unfeeling, you know, d just because you're cocooned in the presence of God. And all of a sudden, I saw a shadow moving all across the platform. And you know how, like, when Greg walks toward me at the airport, my sight, I can't see him that far off, but I know it's him before he gets there because of how he moves. There was this person dancing on the platform, danced like my daughter. And I, I, I went, oh, my God, 
Like, you can't be seeing that. Sharon, you're seeing things. No, I am really seeing that. And I watched this. And, you know, because her movements were, were unique. And then I told my son, I said, Aaron, you won't believe this. You know, I, I can see Charity dancing on the platform. And bless him, it just broke his heart. <laughs> you know, here he is, a six foot three, 250 pound man. And he just crumbled and put his hand around my shoulder because, you know, he thought, oh, mom, you know. And, and so he was not only grieving for his sister, he was grieving for his mom and, and her losing it. And so. So then I turn to Dr. Hammond's oldest son, Tim, and I'm so excited I tell him the same thing. And bless his little heart, he just went. <laughs> you know, but they didn't know that God was healing my broken heart. There is some things that God can do prophetically that he can show you, touch you, tell you that don't fit anybody else. But they have ability. He will not despise the broken heart. And he's drawn to our broken heart, but he wants it healed. I often get in meetings, and people think the way to attract the prophetic is to cry the loudest. <laughs> that means I'm the most desperate, and I'm the most hungry. No, you're the most scary. I'm probably going to avoid you. You know, I have been tackled down in parking lots, and I've been, you know, all sorts of things. So if I think you're going to tackle me and down in the dirt, and, and you know, I'm, I'm looking for Sebastian, you know, <laughs> because he, he uh, bodyguards me there when we get into those environments. And he has bodyguarded me in a few environments that, we have our, that we've been in, which I highly appreciate. Just take a look at him for a moment. This, he's a young <laughs> He, he's, a, he's a young man, but we get in meetings, and, you know, and some people think the only way to let you know that they need help is to manifest a demon. I mean, listen, demons manifest, they do. Get rid of them. Tell them to shut up. Get them help. You know, deal with it. Don't, I'm not afraid of that. But at the same time, a lot of times people don't have any governance over themselves because their heart is not healed. And so there's vulnerable places that the enemy takes advantage of. And I watch Sebastian. I have watched him like the angel in the book of Revelation, one foot in the water and one foot on the land, and he's standing over somebody, and he has such a calm authority that people just go still and quiet, where they were just flopping around like a fish out of water a moment ago. And, you know, what happened there in just that quick moment? He has released such a peace and such a healing, anointing, <laughs> that where they were susceptible and couldn't receive anything, there's a new calmness that has come upon them. So now they're even in a position to be able to receive from the Spirit of God. So now you know why he's only about five feet from me most of the time when, when we're in some of those meetings because he is phenomenal in, in, in that particular area, which I appreciate. So let me just go on, on with this. When, um, in Mark 16, when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb uh, early in the morning to get, take the spices to anoint Jesus and, and all of that, and the angel was sitting on the tomb they thought was the gardener. He says, Jesus is not here. You know, he is arisen. Go tell the disciples. And the angel also said, and go tell Peter. Now, Peter was one of the disciples, but I believe that he said, and go tell Peter. Isn't that funny? Why doesn't it just go tell the disciples? Is it possible? We know Peter's a feeler like Prophet Rob. <laughs> is, it so, is it possible that Peter just needed that extra touch from God? That he needed the extra recognition from Jesus, that little extra nudge to bring him into wholeness in that place. So he says, and go tell my disciples and go tell Peter. Well, Peter didn't just get kicked out of the disciples. I believe that God was responding to his broken heart. Peter was a very passionate man. And he loved much and his heart was broken at that moment. And Jesus remembered even at that place. And uh, so she went and she told them. And they didn't believe her. Okay? They were 
they were uh, in crisis, they were hurting, they had a death, they had witnessed a horrible, brutal, violent murder, they had gone through all of these things, the hope of their uh, generation, of, of, uh, uh, of, of their people group, the Messiah, the, the kingdom coming, all of that was gone in a moment, the, the, the broken heart. And so they went and closed themselves uh, in a room, 11 of them, huddled in fear. Isn't that right? And so Jesus came. And he talked to the ones on the road. He talked to the ones in the room. And he said, I'm still here. And they had a hard time believing him. And this is where I want to get to. The reason they had a hard time believing him is this. He didn't come in the way they knew him. If you're going to have your heart healed, you're going to have to let Jesus do it any way that he wants to do it. You don't care if someone lays hands on you and you fall on the floor. You don't care if you get counseled in the night. You don't care if uh, you're watching uh, uh, 700 Club on television and uh, a Gordon Robertson calls out a word of knowledge and releases a healing over you. You don't care whether someone anointed and has a great name releases deliverance or healing to you or someone that, that you don't even respect uh, the maturity of their Christianity and they do it and it still gets healed. See, he, but also I believe they didn't recognize it because it was Mary Magdalene and they'd been delivered from seven devils. You know, whether we like it or not, that culture was man-led, not women at that time. And so they had a hard time receiving it when she says, I've seen him, come. And so they had a hard time responding to that. If you're going to get your heart healed, you're going to have to rely on you know his voice and respond to him however he wants to touch you, whenever, however, whatever he has you doing. Are you one of the uh, those with leprosy that you get healed by going and continuing on? Are you one of those that, that uh, goes and locks yourself in prayer and fasting? Are you one of those uh, that, that cries the tears until there's no more to cry? Are you one of those that praises your way through? Are you one of those, you know, that, that, that know how to grab hold of faith in faith into the mountain and tear it off of the land and throw it into the sea? I want to say amen to all of those because I, I, I would like to think that we do all going to do all of those at one time or another. But the Spirit of God wants to bring healing to you so that your vulnerable points are no longer there and you really can go from strength to strength and you can go from glory to glory. I want to tell you a moment of how to deal with mourning. All of us have disappointments. All of us have loss. All of us have to get past stuff that there's no explanation for. You amazing prophets and prophetic people, you do not like having no explanations for what you're going through. You do not like not having solutions, and you do not like uh, not having answers. But I'll tell you what, when you are going through areas that you're brokenhearted, a lot of times that really isn't even what you need. What you need is you need to know that Jesus is with you. You need to know the presence of Jesus. You need to know his voice. You may not get all of those other things, but when you have that, it brings a peace that passes all understanding. And it, it, it brings an atmosphere where you're going to get restored. Have you ever gone into the prayer closet? You're in crisis in your life, and you're going, oh, shakaraha. Oh, God, you got to tell me something. you got to tell me something. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. God, help me. Oh, God, please help me. Help me. Tell me something to do. <laughs> and you wait. You're expecting him to tell you something you want to do. You're crying out in your crisis. And all of a sudden, you feel the peace of God come upon you. You didn't get an answer. You didn't get any direction. No solution that you know of, no promise that you really know of, but all of a sudden it's okay. Why is it okay? Because the presence of Jesus is there. 
a lot of times when you get healed of a broken heart, it doesn't come with all the things written out for you. It comes very strongly with the presence of Jesus to bring healing to you. And a lot of people don't know how to deal with the mourning because there's a mourning that happens when you have loss. Uh, there's a mourning that happens when you're, you're brokenhearted in uh, some area. And most people don't know how to deal with it. So I'm going to tell you two ways I see people dealing with it. After 50 years, I can tell you this. Uh, one is this. The scripture, I didn't even write the scripture down. I wish I did. But one is this. It says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You're going to mourn. You're going to have grief. You're going to be brokenhearted. But there is those that are blessed of those that, that mourn in such a way that they are going to be comforted. You're going to make it through. You're going to come out with a healed, broken heart. You're going to make it through. But then the Bible also uh, speaks, speaks about, um, let me see if I can find it. It can take you to disbelief or unbelief. When they were huddled together in that little room, scared to death because Jesus had been killed, uh, they were weakened. Uh, they probably had tears. Jesus walks in the room, and uh, he walks in the room, and he didn't do, oh, let me comfort you. Because of their unbelief, he rebuked them. You think, my gosh, they're already scared. They're already hurting. They're already in trauma. They're already brokenhearted, and you rebuke them. What did he rebuke them for? Their unbelief. Their unbelief in what? I sent you a message. I told you ahead of time. I sent Mary Magdalene to tell you again. I told you this was going to happen. And he rebukes them for their unbelief, their unbelief in his voice. Why don't you just stand to your feet? Father, right now in this room, I know you guys that are around me a lot go, this isn't Sharon's normal way of ministry. No, it's not, but that's okay. Father, right now, I just speak over these areas. Just like when I go to Mercy and we realize that in six months, those girls are going to be unrecognizable. They're going to be clothed and in the right mind. There, there, there's going to be peace on them. There's going to be the glow of the presence of God and the glory of God on them because their hearts have got healed. Father, right now, we believe that's exactly what you want to do in the midst of us. And we say, God, and this is my first message I always teach you when I go in. You know, they want me to teach them all these big, deep messages. And you know what I teach them? I want to teach you how to be counseled by the Holy Spirit. You know why? They don't trust anybody already. So if you have people that have been hurt, you got to teach them how to be counseled. they got to know the voice. they got to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. In Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. You know, we can come to church tonight, and, you know, you watch. I walk among people. I love visiting you. I love finding out what's going on in your life. But some of you go, I'm good. I'm sharing I'm good. I'm fine. I don't know that you're not crushed in your spirit. If there's any place that's safe to go, hey, this is one of those moments my life is inviting Jesus to come and heal the brokenhearted, and I feel a little crushed, this is a place to be able to do it. And if you think that's going to overwhelm somebody, then you're sharing it with the wrong one. Because we recognize all, this is for all of us, not just a few. Let me give you another scripture. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Lord has chosen and sent me to tell the oppressed the good news, to heal the brokenhearted, and to announce freedom for prisoners and captives. The Lord has sent me to comfort those who mourn, and he has sent me to give them flowers in the place of their sorrows. Psalms 34, 18. God is near the brokenhearted. Near the brokenhearted. You know, when my mom was passing from cancer, she knew it was her time. 
and uh, she'd been healed from it before years ago, and she knew this was her time to go. Boy, is that hard to live with someone when you want them healed, and they go, uh-uh, I'm out of here. You know, this is, this is my exit moment. You know, do whatever you do, don't pray to keep me here, and do not raise me from the dead. And, um, you know, and it was, it was a hard moment. And, you know, and, and even my husband, who isn't normally a feeler or a seer, he would go, oh, Sharon, there went an angel. <gasps> it's something just touched me. Heaven was so close to earth because as she was getting ready to go on the greatest trip of her life, you know, we're in sorrow. We're already grieving and she's not gone. We're already broken hearted. You know, I, I took care of my mom and she lived with me the last 15 years of her life. You know, it was a, it was a, a, a tough, it was a tough one, but, oh, God is near the brokenhearted. He was so near and heaven was so close. We were bumping into angels in my house. We thought this is, this is incredible. One more scripture, Genesis 6, 6. This is talking about Jesus and it's talking about him being brokenhearted. Him grieving and his heart being filled with pain because he has emotions. And it says, His grieved and his heart was filled with pain. And that means he was brokenhearted over us and how man was acting. Father, right now, for each one of us right now, we recognize it's your presence that heals. We, you are drawn to any parts of us that are wounded, any parts of us that need restored, any parts of us that have grief and mourning, any parts of us that have not been able to get past old grief, Father, that's still hanging around, any places, Father, where our, our father or mother betrayed us, abandoned us, uh, where a loved one that said they were going to stay didn't stay, Father, where a child has died, Father, where expectations in life didn't come to pass, Father, all of these areas and so much more father we're getting older we've not seen the things that you promised so far all of these areas every one of these areas is a blinking light for you holy spirit come and heal come and heal come and heal come and heal the brokenhearted come and heal you're close to the brokenhearted come and restore come and restore come and restore we don't hide these things from you we invite you into every one of these places knowing, God, we can only partner with you as much as we allow you to heal us. And, Father, you don't want us to run from you and say, I'm good, I'm good. You want us instead to let you run to those wounded areas. And I hear the Spirit of God saying over each of you right now, and for you at home, I just pray that that same healing and that same delivering anointing is upon you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray over a couple at home uh, right now. Um, I think their name is Gert and Simon, and I'm not getting that by a word of knowledge. Prophet Rob shared that name with me earlier today. They lost a son this week. He died. Father, we send that word to Gert and Simon right now in the name of Jesus. Just turn around and face that camera. Father, we send that word to them right now. And Father, we know the loss is bigger than anything they've ever faced. Father, we know that they were standing in places to see him healed, restored, raised up. God, we know they trust you, but there has to be a little disappointment there as well. And so even with this anointing that's upon this message tonight, Gert and Simon, we send you that word of healing the brokenhearted. Not that there's not an appointed time for mourning, but we send that word of restoration to you. And we send our love to you and our comfort to you. And we ask that the comfort of God come upon you. And that you, he would be near the brokenhearted. And that you would just embrace that at this time. And Gertrude and Simon, I hear the spirit of God saying, the Lord says, son and daughter, he says, you're in a unique season. Where the Lord says you had to put everything on hold. And the Lord says, but the world has continued on, and it's not on hold. And the Lord says, as I spoke to the Israelites in captivity in Babylon, and I told them it's time to let your sons and daughters marry, it's time to plant crops, 
I was telling them it was okay for them to get on with their lives. And the Spirit of the Lord says, son and daughter, you're going to find this difficult. won't be the way it was. But the Lord says, I am giving you permission to get on with your life, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I will lift up the arms that hang down, and I will hold up your head and your heart, says God. And the Lord says that there has been even a spirit of infirmity that you have had to battle over the last few months. And I don't believe it's been successful, but it's tried to come against you, whether it was because you were in the hospital or whether it was because you were around the spirit of death. But Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we command that spirit of infirmity and death. You get away from them. You get away from their home. You get away from their hope, their faith, their expectation. In the name of Jesus, you go. And Father, we release your goodness, your love, your compassion, and that you are near the brokenhearted. And Father, we just pray for Mark's wife, Maggie, and the children. Father, right now, would you come? Yeah. And so, Father, we ask right now that you would come and you would comfort the whole family, God. Lord, the children that no longer have a father. Lord, show yourself to be the father. Uh, Lord, that they have need of God. And Lord, for Maggie, God, we ask right now that you would come and step into that place as she's lost her husband, God. And, and for the rest of the siblings as well who've lost a brother, right now, God, we just send the healing word, God, that you would surround them, that you would strengthen them, oh God. Lord, that you would carry them through this season. And Father God, we, we, we forbid any assignment of the enemy to get this family into a tailspin of ungodly grief at any point, Father God, that they would uh, be able to grieve well, Father God. Lord, that you would bring them out of the valley of the shadow of death, Lord, in due course. So, Lord, we send that healing word now, and we say we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated for a few moments. We're going to just call out some things that the Spirit of the Lord uh, uh, is showing uh, uh, us. This gentleman in the black and the white uh, um, uh, hoodie, if you could just stand up, sir. And if I should call someone out and you have your spouse here with you, if they would automatically stand so we don't have to get a word of knowledge who's connected to who. So this is this is your beautiful wife? Oh, good. So the names are? Raphael and Maria. Maria. Stretch your heads in the direction. Spirit of the Lord says, son and daughter, he says, I love you and I have need of you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, Maria, he says, I'm going to show you, says the Lord. He says, I'm giving a new resiliency to you. I'm giving you ability to bounce back, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, he says, you got trapped a few times. And the Lord says, daughter, he says, you didn't want to bounce back up. You didn't want to come to a place where you were flying above the, the radar, where you were overt rather than covert. And the Lord says, daughter, he says, you just said, God, I don't want to be shot at. I don't want to deal with anything. And the Lord says, daughter, he says, but I did not call you to be a woman that lives in a cave. I did not call you to solitude. I did not call you to isolation, says the Lord. And I did not call you, says the Lord, to separate yourselves from the risk of being hurt or the risk of being rejected, says the Lord. And so the Spirit of God says, daughter, he says, instead, he says, I prepared you and I said, take upon you the full armor, says the Lord. Raise that breastplate of righteousness, says the Lord. The Lord says, daughter, he says, lift up. He says, that sword. He says, of faith. For the Lord says, daughter, he says, my declaration over you is I go before you. I'm the one that whispers directions behind you. Go this way, walk ye in it. I've got your back. And the Lord says, daughter, you are in the safest place that you can be moving ahead with me, says the Lord. Now, I don't know how this fits in your life, so, and we hope it's symbolic and we hope it's not true. But, you know, sometimes when people are pregnant, their pregnancy doesn't go to full term. And so uh, the, they have a miscarriage or something of that kind. And people don't know how to support people like that because you didn't have a baby. There was nothing to show for your loss or anything. And so it's only those that had, were carrying that and had the expectation that have a hidden mourning or grief. And the Spirit of the Lord says, daughter, you're like that, says the Lord. The Lord says, there's been hidden mourning and grief on the inside. The others around about you that don't know. And I don't even know the reason or the cause for it. But the Spirit of God says this to you. The Lord says, daughter, he says, you don't have to be one that shouts it from the mountaintops. But the Lord says, daughter, I am not going to let 
disappointments, says God, even disappointment with me. He says, cloud. He says, your faith and your risk and your ability to move forward. For I want to show myself good to you. And I want to cause you to even be wooed to places where the very areas that the enemy touched in your life that you will declare, God has turned that for my good. And the Lord says, daughter, he says, the very same areas, he says, you're going to see other people set free with because of what I have done on the inside of you. So, Father, we speak to areas of her life that have been brokenhearted. And we just say, be released, right, in this atmosphere of do it again, God. We say, be released in Maria right now. And Raphael, the Spirit of God, says, son, he says, I am bringing forth new opportunities. For the Lord says, son, he says, you have felt like uh, you have put upon a yoke of failure. I'm not getting ahead in business. I don't see ability to break through financially. I don't see the ability to plan for the future and a home. And, and I even see a possibility of wanting to live out of this country and all of those things. But I don't see any way of doing it. And you feel like it's on my shoulders, God, and I, I can't do it. And I don't have any way of making it happen and all those things. And the Lord says, I'm the healer of the brokenhearted, says the Lord. I'm going to heal, he says, where you have had some expectation that has been challenged and even some areas that have felt like failure. Father, right now we release healing to him right now in the mighty name of Jesus as only you could do. Father, that there is a place. Father, you said if, if you don't build the house, we build it in vain. So, Father, right now we're just declaring over their lives that you're building a house. They're not doing it in vain. They're built upon the rock, that there's a sturdiness. And, Father, that they are going to fulfill all the things that you called them to do. Your word is set forth to accomplish what it was set forth to do. Father, we connect them again to that word, and we bind it to their inward parts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, the gentleman at the back next to Nick. No, this gentleman here wearing the black T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, what's your name? Just stand to your feet for me. I didn't hear the name. Uh, Tanashi. Stretch your hand in Tanashi's direction. Tanashi, I heard this. Let me tell you what I saw. I saw you on a platform with four other guys. And I felt like I saw you trying to step forwards, but constantly being pulled back. Uh, and, and I felt like there was this thing where you were being tried, people were trying to fit you into a box. But the Spirit of the Lord says, I called you to be a leader. I didn't call you to be one who fits into someone else's box, says the Lord. I called you to be the one who's out in front. And it's like they were your backing singers. Uh, and you were out at the front singing. And I don't know if you're a singer, but the Spirit of the Lord says, son, in this season, you're going to see that I'm going to transition you from the back line to the front line, says the Lord. And the Lord says, you're not going to be on the back foot, but the front foot in this next season, says the Lord. And no longer are you going to be singing to the tune of someone else, but you're going to be singing to the tune that I give you, says the Spirit of the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm going to break you out of that place where you felt like you have to conform to the expectations of other people. And the Lord says, there's such a humility on the inside of you that you've just kind of gone along with it, but there's been a frustration that's been growing on the inside of you saying, if I don't get out of this and don't do something, then I'm going to actually explode and then you've been beating yourself up and you've been I see you like this real self-hatred growing on the inside of you for even feeling like you were meant for more than the people around about you and the Lord says that's not pride that's recognizing the high call that I've placed on you says the Lord and the Lord says I want to get you from that place of being self-critical to being able to see what I see in you says the spirit of the Lord and so the Lord says I want to give you a new name in this season I want to give you a new vision and I want to raise you up into that place says the Lord but the Lord says you've got to break a agreement with that. And the Lord says, this isn't about abandoning your family. It isn't about abandoning your friends. But the Lord says, it is about abandoning a place of limitation and a mindset of limitation. And so, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we bless Tanashi, Lord. We call out the leader that he is, Father God. We call out the pioneer anointing that is on him, Father God. And we say that this is a man who is not just called to go fast and short distances. The Lord says, you're not just a sprinter. The Lord says, you're a long distance runner. And I see you almost like Forrest Gump, you know, run, Forrest, run. Just keep going and going and going. But the Lord says, unlike him who just went a long way and took no one with him, the Lord says, actually, you're going to revisit. And the Lord says, your testimony is going to break many people out of where they were. And you're going to be able to lift them out. It's almost like I see, now what's his name? I called him Onesie the other day. What's his name? The rapper. It's not Onesie. Stormzy. There it is. See, I made that. I know he's Stormzy. I just couldn't remember. All I could remember was the last bit of his name. I had that mental block. 
I said it rhymes with onesie, but it's not. I know, I'm showing my age. No, your baby time clock is ticking, you know, and you're thinking about onesies. <laughs> yeah. I love my onesie. But even as he's gone back into the neighborhood where he grew up and he's made a huge difference, the Lord says, so it will be so with you. And the Lord says, for I'm sending you out that I might send you in. And the Lord says, but that means I've got to lift you out completely for a season so that I might change your mindset, change everything about you. And the Lord says, don't fight the process because the Lord says, you're not going to lose yourself. You're going to find yourself in me, says the Lord. And so, Father God, we bless Tanashi in the name of Jesus. We bless this pioneer anointing, God. But we also bless, it's almost like a, a what is it? How would I word? It's like an SAS thing that's on you to then go back in and break out those who are bound. So, Lord, we bless that breaker anointing, that deliverer anointing is on him in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just want to say this. I truly believe that you have faith in God. You don't have faith in yourself. Yeah. And I really feel like the Spirit of God is doing the work with that. I'm still speaking to you. <laughs> but, the, but the Lord says you don't have faith in yourself. And you are a man that's already saved. You've already received Jesus. But I see that, that at times you feel like, I don't feel saved. I don't feel the presence of God. Where is God? My prayers aren't getting answered. And I just see you, you feeling like, like uh, uh, the churning and, and the confusion. And I speak to that storm right now in the name of Jesus. And I command that camouflage, that smoke covering, those clouds, those waves, you go right now. Peace be still. And, Father, I speak over this man. Father, those things that have tossed him back and forth. Father, that instead he'll feel that stabilization that only you have the ability to bring to him and to secure his heart in such a way that he doesn't feel pushed back and forth. There's something about the power of God that you're drawn to and afraid of at the same time. And the Spirit of God says, son, he says, I'm bringing forth a man that you're standing so close to the edge of the river of the very power Ooh, of the supernatural move of yeah, my spirit. The Lord says you're standing close enough because you want to be close to the power, but you don't want to be in it. And the Lord says the ground is giving way underneath your feet, and you're sliding right into the depths. He says of my water, where you want to be, says the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord says my current will carry you where you could not get on your own, says God. Father, we bless him mightily. Was, was Audrey your name? Audrey, if you could stand up. Is this a husband and wife as well? Audrey and... And Eric, stretch your hands in their direction. We bless them. You have a legacy, and you have a place where somebody wants to hand uh, uh, ministry, hand position, hand labor, <laughs> hand, hand something over to you. But it's not in the environment. It's not in the land. It's not. It doesn't seem to suit or fit your giftings and your callings. And you said, uh, but, you know, we believe in legacy, all of those things. And hear the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God says, I did not make you man-made. I made you God-made, says the Lord. And so the Lord says that you are not going to fulfill the desire of man. You're going to, even though it's not like it's a bad desire, but you're going to fulfill the desire of me, says the Lord. And both of you are such honorable people. Right now, there is a tug of war with your very hearts saying, how do I honor here because we're honorable and yet uh, uh, not do the things that others want us to do and be able to give ourselves to the things that we feel like the Spirit of God wants to. Father, right now, I release the sword from heaven to come down and to cut that rope that has been that tension and that tug of war right now in the day, name of Jesus. Father, we slice that. Father, right from them, Father, that they will not feel the tension, they will not feel the pull, they will not have the argument in their own hearts. But, Father, they will feel free to run the race and pursue the things that you have graced them for. Father, then they, instead, they will not feel called back to do something that they're not. And the Spirit of the Lord says, it is almost as if the uh, prodigal son and the elder brother are both on the inside of you. And the prodigal son is humble, and I'm just going to do whatever I needs to be done, whatever needs to be done. And yet the elder brother is going, uh, uh, where's mine? 
And the Spirit of God says, you are neither the prodigal son, you are neither the elder brother, says the Lord. The Lord says, you are the father that is looking for my sons to come home, says the Lord. And the Spirit of God says, I have put an anointing upon you to position yourself and to call even prodigals forth and to call sons uh, uh, back to the fa- hearts of the fathers, turn to the children, hearts of the children, turns before the father. And the Spirit of God says, son and daughter, you will operate, he says, in the edge of revival, discipleship training I have put that on the inside of you you will grow you will build I'm going to merge you together with those of like anointings and you're going to feel like you're fast tracked even in those places and the spirit of the Lord says that you're going to find out some of the things that you've carried have to break off part of that is the healing of the heart you have to break off who man said you are, says the Lord, so you could be all the things that I've created you to be. Father, right now, heal their hearts, heal their hearts of that tension. Father, the argument that I'm not honoring if I don't do this, we cut them free from that, Father, because they are honoring you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to do something that I've never done before. Um, the, the lady over here in the coral top with the palm trees on it, would you stand to your feet? Yep. The, the lady here in the middle in the navy blue, would you stand? Yep. Yep. Are you? Great. The young lady at the back with the glasses and the navy, uh, sorry, the, the denim jacket, I think it is. And the gentleman here in the polo shirt, the pale blue. Yes. You, sir. Okay, just stretch your hands in this, the, this direction. Um, I felt like the Lord wanted to minister almost identical word to all four of you. And so, Father God, I thank you for each one of these, God. And I, and, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, uh, you are not overlooked. And the Lord says he wanted all of you to stand because he wanted to say to you that you're not overlooked. That the Spirit of the Lord says, I see you're coming in and you're going out. The Lord says, I see you and I honor you. And today I honor you in the company of God's people. And the Lord says, where other people have overlooked you, where they've walked on by, where it's like you've been hidden in plain sight. The Spirit of the Lord says, I want you to know what I see in the Spirit when I look at you. And the Lord says, I see my son and my precious daughters whom I honor today. And the Spirit of the Lord says, says, every time you've been dismissed, and I heard that word so strongly, that you've been dismissed and pushed to the side, the Spirit of the Lord says, it broke my heart. It didn't just break yours, it broke mine. And tonight, the Spirit of the Lord says, I bring you front and center that I might restore your hearts, that I might establish on the inside of you a strength and a resilience to go into the next season with a joy and a hope that you have not had before. For the Lord says, am I not the God of all hopefulness, and do I not give to you this day a strength and a skip in your step that has been missing. And the Lord says, I I see you skip, literally skipping. I used to love skipping, but I see you skipping and wearing, I used to wear out the toes in my shoes. And my mom would have to get me shoes every six weeks because I'd wear them out. And the Lord says, what I'm about to do in you is going to cause you to feel like uh, is." If it was in the natural, as it were, you'd be wearing out your shoes because the Lord's about to put a speed on your feet. And the Lord says the doors are going to open before you. And it's not like you're just going to suddenly have letters in the mail and opportunities, all those kinds of things. But the Lord says there are going to be these little conversations that happen every now and again. And I feel like the Lord says, do not dismiss them. They're going to come and you go, oh, could could this be an opportunity? Could this be a step forwards? Could this be something? The Lord says, yes, 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 yes. Take every one of them. Every single one of them. The Lord says, I'm highlighting it to you today so you don't just think it's your own. Again, it's like it's like this young man over here. I felt like the Lord said this false humility, even this weight of this crushing that's been on you has stopped you. Every time something good has come along, that can't be for me. And the Lord says, that's a lie. And today I want you to renounce it and break it and step into the fullness. The Lord says, I have good things for you. Am I not the one who sets a table before you in the presence of your enemies? And the Lord says, you're going to be ones who laugh like you have never laughed before. And the Lord says, so today I give you back. I give you back your sense of humor, says the Lord. And the Lord says, for you will be able to laugh laugh in the face of your enemy. And the Lord says, it will become joy even in your bones. And the Lord says, even where there's been a weakness, even when there's been an issue in your physical body, the Lord says, today I bring a strengthening on the inside of you. But the Lord says this, open your mouth and I will fill it. 
The Lord says, I have need of your voice in the earth. And the Lord says, I do not want you to be silent anymore. Do not worry about what you will say, but say something, says the Lord. The Lord says, I want you to say it. It doesn't have to be loud, but the Lord says it does have to be strong. And so the Lord says, even if you get it wrong, don't worry, because the Lord says, know that I'm beaming over you with great delight, says the Spirit of the Lord. So Father God, we bless each one of them in Jesus' name. You are not forgotten. Amen. Amen. We want to bless uh, our, our new friend from Australia. If you could stand up. Why don't you stretch your hands in her direction? The Spirit of God says, daughter, he says, I'm showing you. I've made you multitask, says the Lord, but I've made you a focused individual. And the Lord says, so daughter, even those many things that I put before you, the Lord says, daughter, he says, I do not want you just to touch them to keep things, the pot stirred. The Lord says, daughter, I have called you, says the Lord, he says, with a finisher anointing, that not only do you pioneer, not only do you build, not only do you uh, multiply, but the Lord says you also come to a place where you're able to have victory, success, and release, says God. And so the Spirit of God says in this last season you haven't had too many areas of release. But the Lord says I'm bringing that back to you. He says that you might be able to know. He says that's part of the just the movement, part of the 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 that the rhythm that I have put in your life, says God. And I felt like in your younger life. The Lord gave you so many challenges that that uh, uh, you compared yourself to others, which everybody does as seasons in life. But but I felt like the, the Spirit of the Lord says, daughter, I want to declare over you that is not who you are anymore. And the Lord says, so daughter, you are not you are free not to duplicate what somebody else is doing. But the Lord says, daughter, you are free to release the uniqueness of who I put on the inside of you. And the Lord says, so daughter, he says, you're going to find. He says, I'm giving you the freedom to say know more than you have said. It's not going to make you any less busy. It's just going to make your yes be more focused and aligned with what I've called you to do. And the Lord says that I'm going to honor you in the midst of that. And uh, it's not that you need money or you have to have it, but the Spirit of the Lord says your reputation of what I am doing in you prophetically needs you to have success on your earning power and my blessing upon your life financially, says the Lord. And so the Spirit of God says, daughter, I want those things to be part of the calling card of what I'm building for you. So I, I'm opening up a highway where I'm taking the crooked ways and I'm making them straight, he says, in those places. But also, says God, he says that you would know, he says that you are not one that has to knock on the doors for opportunities. But the Lord says, daughter, he says, I'm going to show you. He says that just as Elijah got the attention of the king because of the revelation that he carried, the spirit of the Lord says, daughter, he says, you're going to have, you're going to have, he says, a, a, a government seek you out because of the revelation that you carry, not because they know you or you know somebody that they know or, or this has happened or that has happened. And so the spirit of God says, daughter, he says, uh, uh, I am giving you freedom to, to know you don't have to make anything happen. There is also something that the spirit of God is doing. You spent years, not that you begrudged it, but you paid for the privilege of ministering. You paid for the privilege of going. You paid for the privilege of other people getting blessed and other people getting free and other people being whole and, and nations being uh, blessed. And the Spirit of God says, you paid for it and you didn't uh, uh, ever begrudge it. But the Lord says, daughter, I am no man's debtor, says God. And the Lord says, daughter, he says, I'm going to release to you, he says, finances. And I'm going to release to you also, he says, the finances that build tomorrow, not just the finances that show up when you need them after tomorrow, says the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord says, daughter, it's going to be a grace, he says, that I've released upon you. But it's also going to give you a flexibility. And the Lord says, daughter, he says, because right now it's like right foot, wait, left foot, wait. Right foot, wait. Left foot, right. Now you're going to be able to go right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. And the Lord says there's going to be a momentum, says God. And the Lord says, daughter, he says, you're going to see it. So it'll look like acceleration. But it's just the fact that you're able to, to, to keep moving and you're not having to wait in, in between places. I saw that from uh, right before COVID started, you entered a brook cherub experience. And God took you by brook cherub. Just like he took uh, 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 the prophet there and the raven came and fed him. He had cool waters to drink from, but there was a real isolation and it was like everything that God had called him to do wasn't happening at that moment. And then God said, get up, you're going to uh, this widow. And it didn't look like that was the answer either. And I felt like that the spirit of the Lord says, daughter, your, your brook cherubith is over. 
your, your widow is season has already come. Now, says the Lord, there's going to be a testimony of that, that caught of, of, uh, of special strange miracles that's going to cause others, says the Lord, he says, to uh, uh, be drawn. He says to that anointing, says the Lord. And the Lord says part of that is because of its uniqueness. And I, I heard the Spirit of God also say this to you, because um, I don't even know if you're married or have kids or anything, but I felt like the Spirit of the Lord is saying this. The Lord says, there's always been, he says, a place of agreement, but now, says the Lord, there's coming a place of teammanship. And the Lord says there's a difference between agreement, you know, uh, my husband and I can agree. We can even agree to disagree, <laughs> you know, at times, and we do. But team is different. You know, we pass each other in the hall at the home, and we could be at each other, but we still go team. That means we're going to do it, and we're going to be together. We got each other's back, and we're going to make things work regardless. And I felt like the Lord says you're moving into a season of team. Yeah. And um, I just saw it was like a... a treehouse with a ladder going up to it and I saw you climbing up the ladder and every time you got to the top of the ladder there were there were some kids up there and they were really cool and they just pushed the ladder away and it caused you to fall down you came again and again and again and I heard you saying you know what I don't even want to necessarily join in with what's happening up there I just want to see what's happening and I felt like the Lord's saying there are many times where you've been like you know I don't have to be part of that thing I just want an opportunity to see what goes on there I just want to learn and it doesn't have to be in the middle. It can just be from the edge. And the Spirit of the Lord says this to you, daughter, no longer is the ladder going to be pushed out from underneath you. The Lord says, I'm grabbing you by the hand, and I'm not just going to bring you up high enough so that you can just peek into it. The Lord says, I'm going to put you right in the middle of it. And the Lord says, I'm going to surround you with the people that you need to take you to the next level, who will mentor you, who will pour into you, who will enrich you in every way that you have need of. And the Lord says, without it feeling like... Uh, like you know, like you should be unduly grateful. That's the only way I can say it. Like, oh, I'm so grateful that I even get to be in the room. We are grateful. I get to be around Dr. Shal. I'm so grateful. I just want to, I've so many times I'm like, I just want to sit in the room and listen, you know, and, and I feel like you've been there, but it's gone so far uh, at times that it's been like a desperation. The Lord says, I'm breaking that and I'm putting you right in the middle. But the Lord says, not only that, he says, I'm going to cause you to be the one who holds up the ladders for the ones who are coming behind you. For the Lord says, there are many who've been looking to you over the years and they're saying, we, uh, can you help us? Can you help us too? We want to get there. And you're going, I can't help you get somewhere. I'm not. And the Lord says, that ends now. And the Lord says, I'm taking you into that place where you're in that, the middle and not just on the outside. So Father God, we bless Megan now in Jesus' name. And Megan, Amen. I just felt it's very important that you know this, that you've had to leave much. And it feels like you've started over again and again and again and again. And the Lord said, and, and you have had to count the cost. And there's been the leaving and then the moving ahead and then the leaving and the moving ahead. Many people don't understand why you're doing that. You know, are, are you in your Abraham experience, marking out the land, doing whatever? And, I've, and you've lost things. And with each time, there's been a loss of relationships. Sometimes there was a loss of what was a building uh, reputation. But I felt like that the Spirit of the Lord says, Daughter, because you were obedient to me, as I promised Abram, that he would see the city not made with man's hands. The Spirit of God says, Daughter, you are a revival kingdom of God woman and the spirit of the Lord says not necessarily a church woman though we love the church and we are the church but the Lord says you're a, rival, a revival kingdom of God woman and the spirit of the Lord says daughter he says you are going to see those things built operate in it and be a part of it says the Lord he says in a great way Father we bless her and thank you for coming and blessing our land as well Amen, Amen. We are releasing you to your prophetic team. So prophetic team people, you can go ahead and be released. Um, I want to say goodbye to those that are online. We love you. We pray for you. And uh, you're going to be blessed uh, by teams ministering to you as well.